I'm Chaplain Don Mucko. I come from the Austin, Texas area and a longtime friend of General Vesey's. On behalf of the Vesey family, I extend to you their deep appreciation, not only for your presence, but for your prayers that will take place in this service. The family is especially grateful to you, <laughs> Governor Dayton, Lieutenant Governor Smith, uh, Senator Klobuchar, Attorney General Meese, uh, General, uh, it'll come, thank you, <laughs> General Reimer and General Allen and General Shin. Um, such a pleasure to have you representing the Republic of South Korea. Also, others of you, too numerous, flag and general officers, a special welcome to you as well, along with the Armed Forces men and women who have assisted in preparing for this day, and also men and women, family and guests, the folks at the Waverly House to which this service is being streamed right now, and you can help that streaming if you would, for those of you who have a, a, a cell phone, if you could power it off, that will help preserve the broadband power to stream this into the Waverly home. So if you want to take a moment to just double check that, not just airplane mode, but totally off, that will ensure the, the uh, folks who are at Waverly home to, uh, to whom I also extend grateful admiration and thanks, they'll be able to participate in their way of what takes place. You know, funerals in the Christian tradition include at least two purposes. The first is to give thanks to Almighty God for the gift of life that has been shared by those of us who are here and so many more around the world. To bring comfort also is another purpose of a Christian funeral to those who mourn and suffer the loss of a dear one. And with these two purposes in mind, it's appropriate that we're in this chapel because 69 years ago, General Vesey and his wife were married right here. This chapel has all kinds of historic uh, 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 history. Uh, and you can have a chance to look at that at another time, but it's appropriate that we, in the send-off to one of the great generals of our nation, right here. Therefore, we're now ready to begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And would you please join me in prayer? O oh God of mercy and grace, we give thanks for your loving kindness to all your servants who, having finished their earthly course in faith, now rest from their labors. Especially do we give thanks for the extraordinary life of John W. Vesey, Jr., who served you, his family, our nation, and in many ways, the world with humility and excellence and courage. Calm the hearts of all who grieve his death and grant that we may be faithful until that day when we shall meet you face to face through Jesus Christ, our Lord and rescuer. Amen. I invite you to rise now for the opening hymn of praise.
I invite you now to join with me responsively with the psalm. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases. Who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. Bless the Lord in all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Please be seated for the readings. Bringing the word of God to us this day from selections for this funeral made by General Vesey himself is one of his dear friends, Sergeant Major Brown. To God be the glory, to the bereaved family, to the VIPs and dignitaries and general officers, this is truly a day that the Lord has made where we have been commanded to rejoice. Chapter number 30, I will be reading verses 15 through 20. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destructions. For I command you to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, and to keep his commands, decrees, and law. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering into to possess. But if your heart turns away, and you are not obedient. And if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may live, love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In the New Testament reading, we will be reading to you from the book of John, 14th chapter, verses 1 and 6. Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house have many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No one comes to the Father except through me. May the Lord add a rich blessing to the reading of his already blessed word. I invite you to join me in prayer. Dear Lord, give us some word of comfort and hope to tuck into the pocket of our hearts amidst the various emotions which hover within this chapel. For Jesus' sake, amen. Sarah, John, David, Patricia, we here all surround and support you, for in the past year and a half you have lost, and God has gained, your mother and now your dad. One of America's finest generals, a humble patriot who devoted his illustrious life to the cause of America's freedom. And here we are, gathered in a place that was so significant in your mom and dad's life. Last summer, General Vesey called me, and he said he was being pressured by his children. <laughs> Nothing new, I suspect. Because in his funeral plans, there was a blank spot for who would be the officiant at the funeral. He invited me to fill the spot. I said, you really want to stir things up, don't you, General? A Navy chaplain doing an Army funeral, first class, I must say, with all the wonderful help and support that has been rendered. He said, he flashed back, in fact, over the phone, he said, you're purple, aren't you? Purple in military parlance means the three armed services work jointly together for a common mission. Of course I answered, yes sir, you bet. And then I said, General, what makes you think that I'm going to outlive you? <laughs> and he paused for a moment and he said, well chaplain, he said, I guess the good Lord is going to make that decision. <laughs> And today, we see that decision has been made. I'm here to execute two of Jack Vesey's verbal orders. Order number one, no eulogies at my funeral. If you want to do it sometime later, but not in the worship service. And we are providing that opportunity immediately following our worship here. Second order, he said, you be sure to tell everybody about Jesus. And that's a Jack Vesey way of doing business in life. So, we have time for the eulogies later. The word of God has been placed before us, and I'm going to tell you about Jesus based on those two selections from scripture. We human beings paddle around in a sea of choices. What to wear, where to take a vacation, what schools the kids should go to, how to live life significantly, not just successfully, and so on. So it should be no surprise when Joshua, who succeeded Moses as the leader of the children of Egypt, Israel, at the brink of crossing the Jordan River into God's promised land, long promised land, that Joshua presented the Israelite children with this choice. Either love God and choose life with blessing, or choose to be destroyed. In other words, choose life with God or death without God. Now, we humans pride ourselves in making our own choices, don't we? In this rugged individualism of American way of life. Some say choices are really made in the stars. 
We're determined from the stars by how we live life, or by our body chemistry, or by genetics in the DNA code. Still others say that choices are largely determined by culture and context. But Jack Vesey saw it differently. And as a friend for over 30 years, he made it very, very clear. Jack chose to believe that the God who created, sustained, forgave, and rescued him had his hand in every one of his choices in life. He saw God as the expert in the choosing business for human beings. And no wonder, for when we examine the biblical record, it does become quite evident. God chose to make a universe and a world. He chose to make human beings male and female. He chose to give human beings choices. And then he chose a way to forgive those who make bad choices in life. He formed a nation. Abraham and Sarah were the founders. A nation that would have progeny beyond the number of the stars and the sands in the seashore. That was the nation Israel. And then he said, I will supply Israel with prophets and priests who could keep alive the good news about this great God as well as keep alive the hope for a great Messiah who some day would come. And so, the Messiah came. One starry night in a stable in a small village called Bethlehem. Judea was the province. A young, unique boy, born to a young maiden, Mary. Unique. Unique. Because as he grew, the things he did and the things he said, the healing of the leopards, the mending of wounded hearts, the raising of the dead, all of that made him so unique that since his birth, billions of people have come to fully believe that he was not just the son of Mary, but he was the very son of God who visited this planet and stepped into our earth, into our flesh, to become one with us and absorb what human life and death is like. Not only that, but Jack Vesey and billions of others believed that when Christ died on the cross, that crucifixion was not simply justice that had gone wrong. It was justice that had gone right. For you see, his cross acted like a lever and lifted all from our shoulders and hearts as humans. The consequences of our predisposal attitudes to disobey, to fail, to fall short of, to rebel, to violate the will of a loving and caring father. Say what you want. There is no escape from our being labeled as transgressors. It's part of the human makeup. And Jack, surely no fool, learned that from an early age. But here is the paradox. Jack Vesey knew that before he chose to follow the Lord, the Lord had already by grace chosen him through the waters of baptism at which he was named and called to be one of his own children. It was then that the old Jack died, drowned, and the new Jack arose from those waters of baptism. And throughout Jack's 
Enoch's life, God nourished him, as you so well know from all the stories and encounters that you've had with him in so many venues of life. Jack was nourished by God through his reading of the scriptures, through his prayer, through his visits to what Christians call the Lord's Supper on a regular basis. Also, these activities formed a deeper trust of Jack in this great God of ours, so that the light of that God became reflected in the way that Jack lived his life. He said that one of the things he had thought of sometimes in life was to be a minister. Well, he became a minister of God's choosing, bringing influence and the light of Christ in ways that few have ever had the chance to do. Well, this is the God that Jack heard the call from that said, follow me. This is the God whom Jack followed the God who always has the last word about human doings in life and death. And you heard some of that last word read just moments ago. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms if it were not so. I would have told you, I'm going there to prepare a place for you. The power of God in Jack's life moved him to reflect the light of Christ in all circumstances, whether it was in personal hardships or the horrific scenes of battle, or whether it was motivating or comforting others or eliciting the best from them. He always found ways to do that, and especially with his love for the Boy Scouts, a most unusual sort of attention he gave to them. I recall an occasion where in a church meeting, a committee was stymied. It was stuck in the mud about its future. Jack, who was chairing that meeting, said, uh, maybe we need to rethink something. He said, God's vision is for all people to come to the knowledge of the truth that's in Jesus Christ and that all would be rescued or saved. And then he went on to say that God gave a few orders, not a whole lot. The first one was, follow me. The second one was, love your neighbor as yourself. And the third was, go spread word about me to the whole world. At that point, the committee took a moment or two to reflect on his words, and Jack ended with these words. Now tell me, what's the problem? <laughs> like magic, his words moved that committee forward. Throughout our nation's history, God has raised up gifted leaders to meet the challenges of each age, and Jack Vesey has been one of those gifts from God a persuasive, humble, godly servant by any measure. Any doubts about what made him tick? Let me show you something. Last Christmas's card from Jack to my wife and myself. After a 75-year romance, Christmas without Avis is unusual. Yet, the Christ child's birth and remembering his path to the cross for all of us is reassuring. Love, Jack.
Many of you here hold positions of great power and authority. Some even over the power of life and death. So did Jack. But he was always ready to say that the Lord had total power and authority over everybody and everything. And here's just a little sample of how that worked out in a speech that he gave in Birmingham, Alabama in 1984 to a Veterans Day celebration. I quote, there are not any cheap, easy gimmicks as we seek world peace and national security. Strength, steadiness, willing allies, and the willingness to serve all our great contributors. Above all, we need moral and spiritual health in order to sustain our freedoms. Let me share, finally, one of Jack's very favorite passages from Scripture, from the Book of Romans by St. Paul. If God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be, sep will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. My sister and brother, pilgrims on life's journey, all of you who are here, in a world of chaos and sorrow, destruction and death, these are the words that you can tuck into the pocket of your hearts. Amen. We continue now with the prayer of the church, responsively reading as seen in your worship folder. Let us pray to the Lord our God and Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Give to the family of John Vesey and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and a sure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Give courage and faith to the bereaved that within the communion 
the fellowship of your church, they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a certain hope and a joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our thanks for John Vesey and for all the blessings you bestowed on him in this earthly life. And bring us, at last, to our heavenly home, that with him we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, to bring life and immortality to light. We give thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And those of you who would like to join in the prayer that the Lord taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I now invite the congregation to stand for the closing hymn.
sacred name. As we now take leave one of the other, listen to these words from St. Paul. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated. John Vesey. Like the chaplain, I got orders last year, uh, so I'm going to carry those out. Dad asked me, and chaplain has already thanked everybody here, but he asked me to thank you all for coming. It's an honor that you're all here. But he particularly asked me to thank the members of the armed forces who came, either active service or retirees, and particularly to thank all those of you who served with him for coming here today. Thank you. We'll remain seated for the moment while the casket is prepared for the recession. And then as the casket moves, I invite all of us to stand in honor. The Vesey family, the immediate family, will be uh, ushered out first and then Others will follow behind. And for those who are sitting in the chancel, there will be help to escort you out through those doors over there.